Thank you for having me here. Usually at this time, I'm laying in bed. I'm looking out the window at the sun rising. And this is really special to get up this early. <laughs> See, when you're 70, you can get away with those things. Bob, a year ago, I joined Toastmasters. And I joined it up in northern Minnesota, and they have one Toastmasters in 50 miles. <laughs> and here, they have 50 Toastmasters in 10 miles. So I, I joined five Toastmasters wow. when I came. Because so I spent half a year in Minnesota, half a year here. Man, this is the coolest to go out and talk and talk and talk and talk. Wow. And you're away from the family, so you really get to talk and they actually listen. <laughs> and I says, wow, I can tell all my mystic magic stories. I can tell all about being a cowboy. This is awesome. So I want to introduce you to Fred. This is Fred, and Fred is my friend. Fred is a snake and a staff. And if you want to find out about Fred, I put a little card around there. And it's for old men's stories. And you can read Fred's story, and it's actually a talk that I gave at one of the Toastmasters clubs. And it's about having fun at life and seeing the mystic and the magic that goes on in it. And I've traveled all over the world and found out basically about old man's stories. When I was just a youngster, I was 65. <laughs> and I was sitting on top of the Nile River there. I was sitting in a compound in Juba, Sudan. And Sudan is our newest country. They just voted to be a country, to divide the country in half. And at the time, there was still war going on, and we had a bunch of engineers, and I, I had written the software to run the utility district there, the electrical utilities, and we were all sitting around thinking, a good friend of mine, Sam West from Houston. Isn't that cool, Sam West from Houston? <laughs> was sitting, he'd tell a story, then I'd tell a story, then he'd tell a story, and both of us are in our 60s. And then one of the youngsters would come, and they'd tell a story. Well, Sam and I got that we really enjoyed telling old men stories. <laughs> and I said, and this is fun, because the engineers finally got into it, and they get a good one. But I got all through our lives, we all have some really, really fun old men stories. Now, when I say men, I say it generically, meaning human. Now, old men works really good, because us old men love to be old men. But the other way around doesn't work really well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so we, we get to tell our stories and then have our younger counterparts <laughs> tell theirs. And I got this year that I really enjoy this and want to go in and speak professionally. So I joined this group called the Cyborg Group. And if you, if you look at, if you go in there, you'll go into the, the website, you, they just got a connection to it. But I, but I had a special trip that I took a couple weeks ago. It was for one day in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. One day, and I went there and I thought I was special coming from San Francisco. Well, I went in, the first one I met was a lady by the name of Myra Goldick. I said, where are you from, Myra? She's not from Israel. I said, from Israel? She said, yeah, I came in for one day. Because I'm a professional speaker. 
And I walked around that group, and there were people from all over the world. There was a lady who came in from Malaysia for the one day. There were people that came in from Australia, Hong Kong. And there was about 100 people there that formed this founders group for this organization called the Cyborg Success Group. And again, you can, you can get to it on the net. But I, this, but I got these people were wonderful. And when I got to the group, first thing Steve asked was, how many are Toastmasters? And over half of them raised their hands. And I started asking, and some were president in the New York group, and some were from the, from the LA group. And all of them were either professional speakers or right on the cusp of being professional speakers. And this group is coming around, and you can, you know, you'll see more of it in the next, next year. But I just wanted to sort of pre-present it to you for those that are looking to go that way. Well, while I was there, I, I, I brought Fred, of course. And Oscar. This is Oscar. <laughs> and they asked me, they said, How'd you get Fred? I said, well, you got to look at the net. But I said, how'd you get Oscar? I said, oh, although I have the story on there, you can, you can go and look. I says, the way I got Oscar was, I always wanted to be a cowboy. And I'm from Minnesota. So I know I'd never quite make it. Because cowboys are what? Texans. Well, the best I could do, I married a Texan. <laughs> and boy, she's a Texan. And we went to a dude ranch. So I was going to be a cowboy, I was going to a dude ranch. And I had bought this big Stetson, and it was the coolest Stetson. And we got there, and the Wrangler looked at it and said, Man, that's the coolest hat I've ever seen. And he went over and he touched it. Well, I asked, I asked Terry, I said, it's my wife. I asked Terry, I said, what was his name? I says, she says, his name was Bob. I says, Bob, what's his last name? He says, she says, Wranglers don't have last names. <laughs> And he, and he had this leather outfit, and it was at least three weeks old. I mean, before he washed it last time. It was maybe a, <laughs> 10 years old. Yeah. I said, wow. And he would take all these groups out. And they'd go out right in, and he had this one thing. If you lose something, you lost it. If it blows off you, it's gone. Oh, I, well, I can handle that. Well, we went out, and then we went along, and we were going, and we were just riding along, and my Stetson flew off. And Bob looked over at it and said, Hold it! <laughs> and he stopped on a dime, and he stopped that whole group, and he went back, and he walked over, he went back and he got off his horse and he went down and he picked up the Stetson so gently. And I don't know how he got on the horse holding the tap with both hands. And he got it and, and he came back and he says, Mister, you don't want to lose that beautiful Stetson. So, man, that, that made me feel good. And I had my Stetson for the next day and I, I talked to Terry. And I went over to Wrangler Bob, the end of that group. And I handed him my $250 Stetson, and I says, here's a gift. And he says, oh, thank you, sir. He says, this is my go-to-meeting hat now. And I says, you're welcome. And I just had $250 worth of smile. I just loved it. But about a month later, we were driving through Texas, and we saw this swap meet. 
And they, it was just one of the Texas swap meet, a bunch of ladies and guys were collecting stuff for their church. And we got out, and I looked, and I saw Oscar. <laughs> and I looked at Oscar, and I walked around, and I looked to make sure Terry wasn't around because she's very picky about what I pick Western. And I looked at Oscar, and I came over, and I looked at the bottom of it, and I felt it. And I said, oh, I love that hat. That's mine. And these two ladies that were saying, oh, you love that, you love that, sir. Oh, that's just a hat for you. And I went over, and I looked at it again. And then I could feel it on the back of my shoulder. I looked and there she was. And she says, you're not going to pick that hat, are you? I looked I said, I love this hat. She says, it's heavy leather. You're going to sweat like heck on it. It looks like a miserable hat. And I says, but I love that hat. Can I have it? <laughs> you beat him by crying. <laughs> and she said, Okay, you can have it. You just, I put that hat on and I said, Oh, I have my cowboy hat. And I had named it then. But she turned around to me and says, okay, Buck, let's go. Well, I had really won, man. That day, I became a little more cowboy. I had a western hat, and I had a new cowboy name, Buck. <laughs> Thank you.